I was on a date. I thought it was a date. Thought it was a date. Thought it was a date. <laughs> Look, man, how about it's this chick that's um I met. She from the city we didn't meet while she was in the city. She lived somewhere else. All right. So one day she went on a trip and she just happened to be in the city that I was going to like the next day. Damn. So I hit her up and I'm like, oh man, I'm finna be out there. Like, you know, uh, we should we should link up when I get out there. So <clears throat> we go out there and shit. We actually in DC, right? And um mm. <laughs> we link up at the restaurant. And you know, because it's my first time in DC, I don't know, it's not my first time in DC, but I'm moving around and don't know kind of where to get stuff from. It's like eight, nine o'clock at night. I don't know where to get flowers from and stuff like that. Yeah. So I end up looking up some place to Instacart some flowers from, stuff like that. We get to the dinner. I'm chopping it up, everything going good. You know what I'm saying? I and, know, um, I, I know who you talking about. Probably, uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, um, we chopping it up, everything going good. Before the flowers get a chance to get to the restaurant, she say something like, "Yeah, you know, cause you know, I just be networking and like meeting <laughs> you. I just feel like, yeah." <laughs> she was like, "You know, I just be, I, you know, right now I'm just networking and you know meeting you. I just feel like you would be a super dope friend and somebody to know and network with and things like that." I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, flowers on the way. Though. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, Instacart guy called the phone. Mm -hmm. So I answered the call, and I'm like, oh, I gotta take this. I'll be back. Blew the shit out of her. She looking like, man, if it was a bitch, you could have just took the phone call. Like, yeah. I ain't even know that with you. So she fake blue. I'm like, cool, whatever. So I go outside, grab the flowers, come back, give her the flowers. It was two dozens of roses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, give her yeah. the flowers, and I just flip it. Like, yeah, you know, you just finished some grad school classes for the semester. It's just a little celebration, <laughs> you know. It ain't shit, whatever. <laughs> Salty to the motherfucker. <laughs> Salty to the motherfucker. And um, basically, I got friend zone. Uh huh. Hard. Damn. In person. Boundary. Boom. <laughs> Network. <laughs> Homie. Fuck you talking about? <laughs> All that. So I'm like, cool. Now, uh, I feel like a lot of people would have got bitter in that situation. Stop hitting her up. Or like, I ain't looking for no friend. I ain't on that. Da da da. Whatever. And she's bad, though, on top of that. Like, cold. So. I stayed cool with her, right? Mm -hmm. And because I stayed cool with her, we chopped it up. She real cold on the business side. And she ended up telling me, man, y'all should start taking donations for what y'all do with the, with the young kids in the city or whatever like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't really into donations and stuff. Like, we, we know how to figure out ways to make money to take care of stuff. She like, nah, like, it might be some millionaires following you. You never know. Da, da, da. So I listened to her. Cool. We do, the, we do the event. I put the donation link out there. And probably like an hour, we had enough money to cover a couple events you know what i'm saying so end up being able to beef the event up order better food shit like that you know cover the videographer all of that and um i wouldn't have had that 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 wouldn't have been the case if i would have got on some salty shit and been like oh no i can't be in no friend zone i ain't looking for no homie whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and that's what i want to <clears> talk <throat> about today man like why men why do men run from the friend zone so hard like what does it come from why aren't men just able to be like, okay, I shot my shot. She not on shit. We can yeah. be cool. Uh -huh. Like, what's the big problem? What's the big deal with it? Why is it looked down upon? Why does it look like, you know, you hear the word simp getting thrown out there and all of that. So we're going we gonna to explore that today. If you lazy, you waking up at fucking three o'clock in the afternoon and shit like that. Robin bottles. You're setting the tone for everybody because you're the leader. Popping pills. That's just what comes with being a man. Popping bitch ass niggas. I don't want nobody making decisions over my life except me, not a woman, not a judge, not an officer, not no motherfucker. When them bullets hit them up, look like son had a seizure. I'm not gonna give it up, you know the procedure. I be sipping Jack and Honey. I don't think nothing can make me feel like a man. I don't think nothing can make me not feel like a man. You can't take the benefits of being a man without the responsibilities. Give you niggas hello, so God in the Welcome back to Roses I Did <laughs> for episode Who the Fuck Knows. To some. I'm uh Terry Rosen. Nigga, forgot. I'm Jones. I'm still Terry Rosen. <laughs> fuck you talking about. <laughs> um, how's your week, bro? Smooth, man. Rocky, smooth, all at the same time. Okay. Yeah, all over the place, man. Got a lot going on. Career shit. Like, got a pivot right now. Just got told y'all about it. Still, oh, and uh, it's so crazy, right? So, with the career shit, um, I'm trying to go into a space that I've never been in before. Right, right. 
And I've tried to do it on my own for the last two years. You know what I mean? We, we took the same boot camp, all that type of shit. Like, I'm still on that path to, you know, be, be the SC or whatnot. So, filled out the, all the job applications, ain't getting nothing back or whatnot. And a stubborn person or, you know, I don't know, they would just keep going at it. Like, mm. a positive stubborn person. Like, you stubborn in a good way. You ain't going to stop. You ain't going to give up. Mm. But you could be working hard and going in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, ain't no guidance or whatnot. So I uh, came across somebody on uh, somebody LinkedIn profile, and they specialize in what I'm trying to do mm-hmm. or whatnot. As far as uh, they coach, you know, they their job coach to get those type of roles, and it's specifically pre sales mm-hmm. or in that industry. And I'm like, okay, let me like book a look, consultation to see what they're about. Long story short, I, I book it and everything, and the investment is six thousand dollars for the consultation. No, for the for the one on one coaching. Okay. For the one on one coaching, and like the reason he charges that, um, he's gotten hundreds and hundreds of people the role that, I'm, that I have. I mean, that, that I want. Uh, he definitely got the receipts. He used to hire for this role. Mm-hmm. Um, his whole network are these people, so he know what they looking for. Know all, all of this shit. It just you know lines up or whatnot. And he like, okay, you know, it's uh it's three thousand up front and then you can pay the other three thousand after uh you get the job. Right. You know what I'm saying you can do payment plan. He like even the three thousand, like you can know uh, we could payment plan or whatever, but six all together and you know, on average, you know what I'm saying, uh he like everybody who I've gotten a job, the minimum person is making one twenty. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? On the high end it's two something, you know, and these yeah. people who didn't have the background at all. Like they didn't even have a boot camp like you did. Ooh, ooh. Right. So <clears throat> it's like that. And there's just a lot of pivoting going on. It, you know, just in a transition and on top of other shit. So you gonna do the investment? I am. I fuck with it. I am. I fuck with it. Especially if you don't gotta pay that. It's really a three thousand dollar investment because okay, the rest so. you can pay on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Expect, right, exactly. Yeah. And shit, I, and he had to do a pen plan on the front end too? Yeah. He accept fucking oh, yeah. uh like you can do that shit through app what you call it shit. Afterpay? Afterpay. Oh, he legit. Yeah, and I uh, I look, I, I instantly logged into my after pay. I got a fifteen hundred dollar limit on there, right? So I just got to come out the pocket. You know what I'm saying? Really, just fifteen, and then after pay the rest. And then shit, I would be, I would, nigga, you give me a job for two hundred, I will gladly give you the three thousand dollars first check. For sure, for sure, absolutely. So, a lot going on. Absolutely. Um, my week was uneventful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Carter been kicking it all week. We had a good week together, and um, that's about it. I, I ain't had no no highs or lows this week. It was just solid, that's productive. Cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to complain about, nothing to brag about. It was cool. So, moving on from that, getting down to this motherfucking business, man. We got to get into these voicemails. I feel like we got some good shit today, too. Laura snapped last week. She gave us a real good clip. Mm-hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's I wonder, see. I hope she heard it. You hope Laura heard it? Yeah. So, I previously um, was in, like, a heterosexual relationship. Um, and so, I've never, um, like, you know, had any intercourse with a male before. And, like, in my past relationship, we were together, like, five years, um, I, she would always, like, tell me that I was, like, inexperienced or whatever, like, when it, like, came to, like, intercourse and stuff, because, like, of course, I don't know, I don't think I said this in the first part, but, like, I was a virgin, like, going into, like, the relationship, and, like, I still never, you know, um, mess with like or like done anything physical like with a male um and so like we broke up and um i do like my next relationship i do want to um mess or like i do want to get into a relationship with a male however i'm still not like experienced in like that, like in intercourse, obviously, because 
I was in a relationship for five years, so of course, like, yeah. But the thing that I struggled with a lot in my last relationship is, like, um, she didn't really want to teach me anything or, like, tell me things that, like, she liked that, like, I could do or, like, anything of that nature. So I guess, like, my question is, like, going into, like, my next relationship, like, as far as, like, me being a virgin and stuff, like, what is, like, your, like, how, what's your approach with that? Like, I don't know, I just kind of feel like I'm expected to be, like, some, like, skilled, like, I'm supposed to know, like, everything when it comes to, like, intercourse and stuff. But, like, I personally, like, feel like if you're with somebody who loves you, that you want to teach you and, like, show you different stuff, like, I don't know. It's, I don't know if this is like a question, but like, can you just kind of give me your insight on like what you think or like what do you suggest like going into like my next relationship? Like, as far as like not having that experience, I just feel like you should um make sure you date somebody who really cares about you who's gonna like take care of your body and respect you let them be transparent about the fact that you are a virgin um and you haven't um had intercourse before uh make sure that the guy knows how to take it slow i don't know how old you are but if you're dating a guy you know that's in his mid-20s and up um maybe he's experienced with taking virginity i think most guys aren't experienced with taking virginity Mm -hmm. that's how you know all girls is fucking the same niggas (laughs) <laughs> Cause how is every girl losing that virginity, but most niggas ain't never took no virginity. <laughs> y'all all fuck the same niggas. Damn, y'all ain't shit. Anyway, um, but yeah, make sure you know um, you be transparent. Let him know he got to take it slow. Um, Jody would probably say use some fucking lube for sure. You probably want to use some lube and things like that. And um, yeah, just be transparent. Have make make sure you with somebody who's uh, being patient with you. Um. And the thing with making sure somebody being patient with you, everybody's not. Most niggas is, you know, most niggas do try to fuck. Um, and I, I just don't know what space you in or, like, who you are or anything like that, how you coming off to people. Because um, it's, yeah, but like like bro said, making sure, you know, you do what, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do another one? <laughs> I, I, I have thinking, something to say. I was going like, to, I, I really, I just want to say I appreciate your approach. You you answered that so maturely. Yeah. yeah. I had a I had an answer in my head. I was finna, I'm glad you started talking first because usually I'll be the first to answer. And I probably would have said, <laughs> shit, I was going to say some shit like, yeah, just go get your reps in. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, I, but. so, <laughs> I, what I heard from that was that she said she was in a relationship for five years with a woman. So she, a woman told you you were inexperienced. You were with her for five years and she told you that you were inexperienced, which can, when I hear that, it tells me that you're super green when it comes to sex. So you have to think about why you're having sex and what actually pleases you in the moment. So if you're, Typically, woman, woman sex is like better than heterosexual sex because you are more likely to have orgasm, climax, all of that. But if your partner is telling you that you're inexperienced and she doesn't, I think it's two different things that's happening. Neither one of you know how to communicate what's pleasurable to you. Um, Since you are a virgin and you've only been with the one woman, that tells me that you haven't really explored your body. So you shouldn't be thinking about somebody else. You should be focusing on what you need to do to please yourself so that you can communicate and advocate what it is that's pleasurable to you as opposed to just waiting for people to teach you stuff. So I think the issue is that when it comes to sex, we look at sex as like, all right, I'm going to go have sex with this person because they're going to teach me the things that they know. Whereas if you want to learn stuff, you should set the tone in terms of like, all right, cool. This is what play, this is what pleases me. And then once you start to advocate for yourself and your own pleasure, then other people will naturally say, oh, well, by the way, I also like this thing or I dislike this other thing. So I say lead, be the person that you think you're looking for. Okay. That was okay. We got, <clears throat> so we got another one. Okay, so I went out with somebody or with a guy and 
he was giving me the vibe that, you know, he was telling me. He was hugged up, and he was talking about stuff that we could do together or whatever. Fast forward, we talk about the situation, and he said that he really liked me as a person, but he don't think that we will work out in a relationship because he said that he's too controlling and he thinks that we will clash. Believe I personally him. felt like that was a cop out because if you wanted to, you would change. So obviously, he don't want to change for me. Don't date him either way. How do y'all feel about that? I'm gonna say a, I'm gonna give you a one line. Hold on, hold on, she ain't done. Oh. <laughs> also, to add to the last, we gotta live DJ for three. Tell you like three minutes, nigga. <laughs> when he said he took me out, he said he took me out because he wanted to vibe with me, and. I was kind of confused because what the hell does that mean? Like, I don't, and he said he was on some, you know, I want to see if I want to get to know her as a friend. I don't really go on dates with friends. We could talk on the phone. And why would you call it a date if you were just trying to vibe with me? I'm just totally confused about it. You're not confused. Um, I feel like she heard me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not going to say that. Well, I'm, I am going to say Hello? Asking for pictures, I always felt like that was kind of weird. Even though I would never just automatically assume they want a naked picture. He asked me for pictures, and we've uh, seen baby. each other in person several times. So, I don't know. I kind of felt like, in a sense, he was trying to treat me like his sneaky link or whatever. Even though he didn't talk about nothing sexual, nothing. We wasn't even on nothing sexual. He ain't tried nothing or anything. It seemed like the night was decent, and we didn't end on no weirdness. So I'm just like, I'm cool or whatever. Like, we can be platonic friends, but I just think he was on some BS, for real. Mm. How dare he befriend you? I just think he was testing the waters, man. This is perfect for this episode. It really it is. is. Everybody's in the fucking friend zone. <laughs> But yeah, so number one, the one liner, if he wanted to, he will. Um, and uh, he was just testing the waters. Like if I'm if I'm taking the chick, uh, shorty on a date to vibe to, there's no intention in it. It's, there's no intention there. There's no yeah, forward you're thought. You're not confused about it. You know that nigga ain't no shit. You just like him. That's all. Mm-hmm. So you're not confused. You're you know this that is nigga why ain't no shit and you like him. This is okay. why. Just don't. Yeah. Just don't keep talking to him. This is why they say. Um, you don't have to lie to a woman. Cause if she they will you, lie. <laughs> she gonna lie to herself. <laughs> exactly. And you're lying to yourself. You know damn well he just wanna fuck. Uh, he he wanna treat you like a sneaky link. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He wanna keep you as a friend with benefits. He left out the benefit part. But, but she said thing. he didn't talk about anything sexual. You don't need to know what so. he on. You know what he not on. No. <laughs> he know, he not oh, on boy. what you on. That's, that's all right. At the end of the day, like you know what that nigga not, that nigga not trying to do what you trying to do. You trying to figure out what he is trying to do is keeping you around longer than you should be. Like, I mm. think that we be focused on the reason why too much. I say this all the time. Like, fuck the reason why. Just leave. <laughs> like, mm. it, it don't matter. Like, it, it don't matter why this nigga not acting right. It don't matter why this, why that. You're not getting what you want out of the situation. Get the fuck out of there. Like, that's it. That's all. You know what I'm saying? What was that? Damn, everybody in friend zone. Everybody in the fucking friend zone. Unfortunately. I wonder if y'all can hear my stomach through the mic. It's crazy out here. Where's the fucking Trello for the day, man? Let's do this shit. Oh, news. Cardi B and motherfucking Offset. This is going to be a long episode. Sorry, Jody. <laughs> Nigga, sorry, me. <laughs> Nigga, fuck you. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't... I, I didn't... I didn't... I need to start... That's the thing, man. When you podcasters and shit, like, you kind of got to stay up on what's going on. We don't on. have to. I don't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I be hearing shit or I, 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 cause I don't follow the the pages. I always end up cutting out clips of like um, celebrity news out because uh-huh. I'll hear something and be like, oh, we didn't know that, so it makes everything we said invalid. Because <laughs> like, you know we don't be checking on shit. But I want to say this: I don't want to talk about Cardi B and Offset directly, and I never want to talk about celebrities directly because I don't know what the fuck be happening. Yeah. What I do want to talk about is what was what was thrown out there, and 
if it is true, how should men look at it? What can men learn from what we saw? Okay. Mm. Whether it happened or it didn't happen, what can men look at that situation, whether it's okay. true or not, and take away from it? So the situation is that uh, I'll say cheated numerous, numerous times. times non right? And Cardi B was embarrassed numerous times. She expressed that. She expressed her having like some mental health struggles and not putting out albums and shit like that. Pretty sure he had a lot to do with that. And he, you know, I got somebody accused her of cheating back or she said, you know, he said she was fucking some other nigga while pregnant. She said that oh she did. God. It's a debate saying that she just said it to piss him off or maybe she did. We don't know. But what can men learn from that situation? Number one, Cardi B was who she was before she was Cardi B. Mm -hmm. You got to look at where, where people come from because it matters. It's a part of who they are. It's a part of their character in a sense. Yes, people can change, but that's still the root. Uh, number two, you he uh, what you can learn as a man, he did numerous, he cheated numerous times. Mm -hmm. Most niggas, y'all already know, we can't handle what we dish out. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just hits differently. You know what I'm saying? So he led, we the leaders, right? He led, okay, cheating. She, we didn't hear about her cheating on him. We heard about her cheating back. So you kind of like set your path when, you know what I'm saying, you open that door and you can't control. I, I tell Trey this all the time. You can't control how people respond and what you do to them. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, you know, it, whether she cheated back, um, quote unquote regular, or she cheated back and let a nigga fuck with your baby inside her. You know what I'm saying? She, he nutted on her baby. He nutted on your baby head. <laughs> Not doing your baby. Did you suck his dick? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta make that like an ad lib. So. <laughs> Did you suck his dick? <laughs> but nah, you know what I'm saying. So what fellas can learn from this, you know what I'm saying. You can learn by choosing better. You know what I'm saying. You, you don't want to really try to change somebody. Uh, and also, you, you cannot cheat because it, that it's so funny that uh, that paranoia that niggas have mm -hmm. of. They sure they cheating back. Right. <laughs> it's the dumbest shit ever. It's the dumbest. I can't trust you. <laughs> you no could have just not done it. I can't trust you no more because you might do me how I did you. I can't trust you because <laughs> of what I did. Right. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah, man, just. Do I think the thing that we could take away from it is that nigga, the game is fair, and we try mm -hmm. to make it feel like women can't do the shit that we do. Until you run into a woman who don't give a fuck about your imaginary rules. <laughs> like Man. at the end of the day, like you she cheated when she had a baby in her. You cheated while she had a baby in her. <laughs> like, nigga, like, <laughs> like you we can try to make all these imaginary rules that no, she can't do it. She gotta drop the baby first and she a hoe. Oh, she don't give a fuck. She, like when you run into that girl who don't give a fuck about what you think because of the actions that you the shit that you started the damage that you said. You're going to be sick, my nigga. So you got to understand that the game is fair. You can trick yourself as much as you want to and listen to all these other men tear down women and and, and say like, oh, well, she ain't shit. She fucked with baby and her. And maybe she ain't. It don't fucking matter because she did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're going to feel how you feel and you're going to be hurt and you're going to be sick and you're going to throw up on your fucking phone mm -hmm. all the same. No matter if, how, how wrong or right it was or how unfair it was, you're going to feel the fucking same. So before you start playing that game, just understand that your rules are imaginary, brother. <laughs> your rules are imaginary. They don't exist. And she's going to do what the fuck she want to do. So to avoid that happening to you, you should do the right thing. And that way, if somebody does still do the wrong thing, at least it's not on your hands and you didn't you didn't cause it. You could walk away freely from the situation instead of being in a situation where it's like, a motherfucker could do that and look at you and be like, nigga, what the fuck is you crying for? Bro, bro say... They don't uh they don't give a fuck about your rules or, or whatnot. A lot of the times women do give a fuck until you do something. Like mm. it's it's so crazy how what women turn into after something is done to them. Mm -hmm. Cause she wasn't on none of that shit before. Like mm -hmm. everything was cool before. You wasn't hearing rumors before, mm -hmm. but you did something and it brought a different side out of her. Mm -hmm. Uh whether whether it's different or whether it was suppressed, you brought that motherfucker back up. You and can't handle it. You, yeah, so. and women are more vengeful than us. Yeah, man, they are more vindictive than we are. You can't win that game. Spiteful. Man. You cannot win that game. That'd be can't. smooth, man. Leave that shit alone, man. Leave that shit alone. Sexual discipline is important. 
It is. Uh, you, That's important. You kind of, uh, you almost threw me off right there. I'm like, nigga, we switch topics? <laughs> nah, we didn't. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> keep your dick in your pants. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> going to the topic, man, um, what would you, how would you define or, or categorize the friend zone? Like, how would I define the friend zone? Yeah, yeah how would you define the friend zone? The friend zone is a place that you go when you it's roll like the gulag. Go ahead. The gulag, oh God. <laughs> That's what it is. It's low key the gulag. Okay. But the friend place is a place where you go when you pursued a woman romantically and she rejected your advances. Yeah. So you, you got turned around. But it's optional. It, it is optional. But that's the default, nigga. That's the, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't have to stay in the gulag. Yeah. You can quit the game or, you know what I'm saying? You can yeah. try to fight to play again in another part, on another part of the map. You can't go back over there, though. Because that yeah. nigga who just sniped your fucking face off is still there and he'll go do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and in this case she's gonna snipe she's gonna you. snipe she your fucking snipe face off again. once again yeah um i agree the friend zone is basically you you shot your shot she she passed mm -hmm. and you stayed around mm -hmm. that's really what the friend zone is because you it's your option you don't have to she could shoot you could shoot your shot she turn you down you never speak to her again yeah but you stayed you decided to stay around that's the friend zone a lot of men try to avoid the friend zone a lot of men try to like, no, I don't, I shot my shot. I wanted you in this way mm -hmm. and only this way. Mm -hmm. And if I can't have you in that way, I'm finna get the fuck on. For I'm sure. finna move around. I think that sometimes it can be some sincerity in that. And I think that sometimes it could come from a place of bitterness. Yeah. I think the idea of the friend zone was invented out of bitterness. <laughs> the way it's talked about, the way it's, just the the way it's held amongst men, I think it comes from a place of bitterness. I say, generally speaking, yeah, I would agree that like when you act, if you act any man about the friend zone, yeah. he'll get defensive. Yeah, you know? it, it, it's not like a an okay thing. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we we friends. Like, nah, you got put there. You're like if you're in the friend zone, you look down upon like, oh nigga, you tried to shoot and she curved your ass. That's how they looking at it. You know absolutely, what absolutely. I and think that's what it is. That's what happened. Uh, the, the friend zone is really a result of expectations and mis and a misunderstanding for a lot of times. Because sometimes it's not as simple as like you saw a girl at a random place, you shot your shot, she turned you down, now y'all friends. And that you, typically in that case, you're never going to see her again. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But a lot of times it's the coworker. It's the, 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 the classmate, mm, the girl that you yeah. was cool with for a long time. And you thought that she liked you. Yeah. And you finally worked up the courage to say like, oh, <laughs> let's do this. And she say, nigga, we're just you're cool. You're homie. <laughs> well, nigga, I have a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're tripping. So that, that came from a misunderstanding and an expectation. And that's a unique situation because at that point, that's when it's like, do you... You're bitter and now it's like... Because mm. y'all been cool this whole time. Yeah. And your mind, you thought it was something else. And her mm. mind, y'all been... But in reality, y'all was cool this whole time. Right. But now you want to withdraw from that and say like, even though we sit next to each other in class, I don't want to sit right here no more. <laughs> I don't want to eat lunch together no more. I don't want to skate with you. I don't want to with you. I don't want to with you. None of that shit. And that's that's where the bitterness comes in because you had a false expectation that no one ever agreed to. That shit was just in your mind. Mm. That's solid. That's solid. Uh Cause hey, I didn't think of it like that. Cause yeah. typically, like with the friend zone, it's usually somebody who you had already been around. Like yeah. you were, you low key was friends, right? And in my case, with the story I told earlier, that's what happened on the date. Well, on the the, the date that <laughs> look, was, look, got, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I we talked a lot in the DMs. Like we we talked a lot in the DMs. Some of that shit was a little flirtatious, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So the expectation wasn't just I wasn't pulling it out of my ass. Yeah. But at the end of the day, she we, she's not acting like she's not attracted to me. She's not acting like if she was open to that, I wouldn't be a nigga that she would be looking at. She's just saying, I'm not on that right now. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I thought she would be. I'm not, but me, this is the thing, right? And I won't get into this later in the show. We always talk about liking a person that like you, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about how important it is to like someone who likes you or to go after the person that likes you and not the person who you, you chasing around because you like them and they may or may not be interested and you trying to figure it out and you spending all this money going all these days doing all this stupid shit, right? <laughs> now, I also talk about, let's combine liking a person that likes you. We, I also talk about, we're looking for a situation and not a person. Yeah. Right? We're not looking for, because when you get caught up, men or women, when you get caught up looking for that particular person, 
that's when you stay around too long. That's when you accept a lot of bullshit from somebody you shouldn't accept. Shorty on uh, TikTok Live talking about, I've been with this nigga 10 years. He on dating sites. Uh, yeah. You too into the person. But if you're looking for a situation, peace, respect, um, companionship, once those things are off the table, you stop fucking with the person because that's not the situation you was looking for. So if I go into a situation and I'm trying to shoot my shot and I like shorty and she, she don't like me, the situation off the table. So I no longer like you either because I yeah. wasn't about you. It was about <laughs> what I thought we could have. And now I realize we can't have it. So I don't have no problem being cool at all. I don't want, I don't even looking at you like that anymore. You still fine as hell. That ass yeah. still fat. You yeah. still look good. Yeah. But I don't want you because you don't want me and it's nothing we can have. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing that we can have if you don't like me. You have to like me. Yeah, it's a clip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, for me, that's why, like, the bitterness doesn't creep in. Mm. You know, like, and I'm cool with some badass women. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I am. Like, and I ain't talking about, like, my closest friends. Even uh, me and Jody just went out for a birthday dinner the other day. Shorty cold. Cold. Like, oh. cold. I know you're talking about. Super cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cool. Like we cool, we we was cool from the jump. Uh, she came to a couple spots, like, and she she called me, hit up, hit me up, slide on me. She slid on me multiple times, a hella hella shit. Just call my phone, pull up. She pull up by herself. Yeah, I hit her a, a couple times. I'm like, hey, let's let's do this after this. Woo. She turned. She, cool. She like, nah, I, I gotta do this. Cool, we're cool. She invited me to the birthday dinner. Cool, like I slide. Like it's no big deal because I like if you don't like me, we can't have. And it just even going the deep end to liking me, right? A girl got to like me a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, we got this shit from Goldie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I fuck with Goldie. <laughs> For sure. And I feel like, I don't think that, like, I, I don't feel like I started doing that when I heard him say that. I feel like I was already on that path. Mm -hmm. But him, like, he made it very clear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he put a lot of, like, light on that path. And the thing is this, right? Obviously, I got to like the woman, too, to court her. But we both know how we going to show up. For a woman that we like, mm -hmm. we both know we going on the dates, we going on trips, we 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 buying the gifts, the flowers, the shit you didn't ask for, being thoughtful, being uh consider consideration, get the pussy wet. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? We uh, being all considerate, all of that. So we know what our role is and how much we have to do. Cause I like you and I'm gonna do all that. You got. I ain't doing that for a motherfucker who kind of like me. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing that for somebody who kind of like me a little bit. Yeah. You got to like me a whole lot for me to do that shit. Uh huh. A whole lot. And I think again, like that's where a lot of is me and we get it fucked up a lot of times because we willing to do all the all the shit it come with for a girl who we don't even know if she like us or not. Mm. But it's this girl right here who do like us a whole lot, and we don't get her the time of day. You know what I'm saying? And then we end up bitter in the end when we find out Shorty didn't like us as much as we thought she did. And it was obvious from the beginning because you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have had to chase her around if she did. Mm. So again, that's how I view the shit. And that's why, like, if somebody's not interested at this point in life, I'm hundred percent not interested either. I don't give a fuck how fine you is because the situation I'm looking for is not on the table. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing to be chasing around or thirsty for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said a lot. I, I should have. I wish I could have pinned. Like, <laughs> I mean, we started <laughs> off. We, we started off with talking about like the misunder, like how guys fall into the friend zone from a misunderstanding or an unfounded expectation. So y'all was cool. You thought it was this, and then you know what I'm saying. You shoot your shot, and she like, nah, nigga, we just you my friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on where the uh, the the bitterness come from. Yeah. So. Especially when the, the bitterness comes from, obviously it comes from um, like low key. Uh, do I want to say resentment? Resentment. Can I say resentment? It's bitterness. That kind of it's some overlap. Overlap there, but they get bitter because now, I guess the the, the situation didn't change. Mm -hmm. Your expectations just got shattered. It's not gonna go where you thought it was. It's not gonna go where you thought it was, and just naturally we got a lot of ego too. You know what I'm saying? So your ego is involved. You bitter. And also, the guys who stick around, the worst thing you can do, like if you feel that way, you if you feel that strong about it, and you accept the friend zone, and now you're in the friend zone, you low-key don't want to be there, you're hoping to eventually grow on her, where she'll eventually like you one day, and in that process, while you're waiting on her to like you, you're doing things for her. 
know what I'm saying? You showing up as this friend, you know, you, you, uh, you coming to her aid with small things and whatnot. And you low key keeping a tally of this shit. Like I do, yeah. I do this for you. I do that for you. And when enough time go by where you feel like she should like you and you try to shoot again and she like, bro, what is you on? Ooh, what? Shorty, all that stuff I do for you, I show up for you like this, I do. And and you just vomit on her with all of the shit that you did in a just a disgenuine fashion. And it just look you just it's just bad. It's nasty. It's super nasty. That's a clip too. It's super nasty. And I feel like um I've seen situations where a girl has a boyfriend, Mm -hmm. she has a male best friend that's also cool with the boyfriend because they've been friends for so long. And her and that boyfriend break up. And that that male friend shoot his shot, Ugh. and she's crushed. Yeah, like she's lit, her feelings are dead ass hurt because she like nigga. I thought this shit was genuine the whole time. So it's not that she turned. It's not fuck the fact that she turned off by the fact that she mm. want to fuck with her. Fuck the fact that she just don't want to fuck with you. She's actually hurt. People as a friend, like you know what I'm saying. People think heartbreak is romantic. Like she, you just broke yeah. her heart. And yeah. it, it's not it's not romantic. Like she y'all she thought y'all had a genuine friendship and everything what she thought this was turned out to be a lie for yeah. somebody that they cared about, somebody that you know what I'm saying, she she cared about you in a genuine way. And um you just showed up to be like this this shit was a fake this whole time. I, it feels predatory, like as a woman who is. um has experienced it with both men and women. Like mm-hmm. I've had men and women pretend to be my friend and then like shoot they shot and i'm like yo what the like yeah. what's going on here now yeah. i don't feel comfortable being my full self around you type shit because like you taking it to mean this and i'm like no nah, we just cool so it definitely feel predatory yeah. and ain't no coming back from that shit Mm-mm. the friendship over with mm-hmm. yeah. there's no coming back from that you know what i'm saying like there's no coming back from that and for everybody who's listening right now, that's jody in the background hey. she's on the boards today real duncan is a uh, he, he's he's he took a sick a day. day. No, but, <laughs> sick day. Did not participate. <laughs> he's Nigga sick. Got, uh, PTO. That's crazy. We don't even get that shit out. <laughs> nah, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just you don't give it out. Don't mean he ain't taking it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that like, hey, I'm not gonna be here. He on called this day. in like, sick. No, nah, we didn't approve that. Like, I'm letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you know. Letting you know to figure that shit out. <laughs> well, whoever you got to call, whoever you got to call, because I'm not going to be here that I'm day. I'm you know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, talking about, you brought up the male ego mm-hmm. and how your ego can be shattered oh, or, wait. or fractured. Go ahead. Well, um, I feel like also some people could be genuine when they think this and some people could be using it as like a a, a way in type shit. But don't you know how people say, like, man, it's always better to be friends first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like in people's heads, guys and girls, they probably, you know, create, cause you know, when you want an outcome, you're going to create the scenario that's beneficial to the outcome that you want. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So the story that they're telling themselves like, yeah, yeah, of course we've been friends all this time. We've been building a friendship. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I grew on you. I thought you grew on me. So yeah, that's why I made the pass or whatever the case may be. So what do you say to the people who feel like, you know, yeah, it's, we, we friends first and then a romantic come. Dangerous. Mm-hmm. Then ice. Yeah. Tricky. Tricky. Because even, first of all, if you, that's not for genuine friendships. Mm-hmm. That's not a situation to where like. You're going ice skating wh- on the way in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> when people say we need to be friends first, they're not talking about situations where you're already friends with somebody. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then you're going to suddenly like try to fuck them. Like, <laughs> that's not what they're talking about. They're saying that like you meet someone who yeah. you might genuinely be interested in and say, you know what, we're gonna take this slow. It's no uh-huh. pressure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no pressure. We're not gonna go on no date. We just gonna hit each other up, make a couple phone calls. Maybe we end up going to church together. Maybe we end up going to grab something to eat or grabbing a drink together. But it's not the pressure of this is a date. I'm trying to get to know you. I'm trying to uh spend a night at your crib, none of that. We just getting to know each other. And the way the reason why that can be tricky is because it can kill us a lot of situations too because if this shit get too friendly and we telling each other too much, now we'll never fuck with each other because yeah. we know too much. Uh-huh. And there's certain shit that we kind of didn't need to know in a relationship. Because in a relationship, I don't need to know everything about your past. I don't need to know everything about your history for this shit to work. Yeah. There's some people who cool with knowing all that and can accept it. It's some Most people can't. Most people can't. So that friendship, first shit can be dangerous because it can get comfortable and it can lead to 
y'all looking at each other in a way. Because if we just friends first, we still dating other people, mm -hmm. right? We might, I might, since we friends first and we might be interested in each other, might date later down the road, but I might tell you what I got going on with somebody that I'm currently dating. I'll tell you this or tell you that. And next week I'm dating somebody else. <laughs> and two weeks from now I'm dating somebody, you know what? No, nah, I can't fuck with you. You got so much going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, <laughs> or when y'all do move into that relationship space from the friendship, you you hold shit against them that you found out about mm, them during in the, the friendship, friendship space. Mm. And that's nasty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Same this shit can get eyes. nasty. Like a lot of this shit Yee! get nasty, G. It's nasty. What do you think about that though? What about just that like we should start as friends? No, that's the yeah. I, I I get the same uh, thoughts. Yeah. Like uh, you not <laughs> you're not going into it like um. I just lost my train of thought. I thought about something else, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with what you said. Yeah, this shit, this shit could get nasty, man. But going, going back to the male ego part, uh huh. The male ego being fragile. The male ego being shattered by the thought that you know I had this expectation. Uh, we had this this friendship that I thought was going this way. I thought she might have been into me. I did all these things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't get what I wanted. I think the male ego is too tied to the ability to get a woman, right? The ability to win over a, rom a woman's romance. I did all these things and you, you owe me this romance. You didn't give it to me. I'm mad at you, whatever the case may be. I think a lot of our ego is tied to being able to bag a chick. And it's one thing to be able to to be 14 and you in a mall trying to see who get the most numbers and tying your ego to that. It's one thing to be older and be in a club doing the same thing. It's one thing to be older and being on trips doing the same thing because we kind of never stop doing the shit until we get in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And we might not be counting how many numbers we got, but niggas is trying to win right. at the end of the day. And we tie our ego to the ability to do that. It's one thing to do that when you go into a place and just trying to bag a chick. It's another thing when well, this is a chick that you know, she know your personality and you've done all of these things and it still didn't work. Yeah. That shattered the ego in a different way. But like Jody said, it is predatory because you are hiding your true intention. That's what makes it predatory. Like you're hiding your true intention and you might even be lying to yourself about the shit. You might even be telling yourself that it's genuine and you would have done this anyway. And when the shit all fall down, you regret doing it all. Like you was lying to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just think the male ego... It's too tied to, I guess that's what ego is. It's tied to a lot of superficial shit that it shouldn't be tied to. And and the ability to be able to win a, rom a woman's romance is one of them. We look at niggas who have that ability uh, in abundance as superior to men who don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where the bitterness comes in at when you do all the extra shit and she go fuck a nigga who not doing <laughs> nothing for her. You know what I'm saying? This nigga don't even know her last name. And you over here in the friend zone buying her shit and, and paying for her, her lunch and this and that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You didn't pay for lunch. And she say, oh, um, thanks for the lunch. I'm finna go, you know, <laughs> my, my nigga finna pick me up real quick. I'm finna go chill with him for the rest of the break. I, I, I'm a hot, I'm a hot back. And, and when you got hot hidden, on the job. And when you got hidden uh, intentions and expectations, that's going to bug the fuck out of you. If you was You're just, sick. A, if you was a real friend, you'd be like, oh, all right, back, go have a good time. But you did that shit with an uh, expected end and with a desired outcome. And, like, just think about this. Do you really want a woman you have to convince to like you? Like, and you have Most to niggas do. Perform. And we have before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and younger, you know? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Go, go keep going, though. Yeah, you, you, you got to convince or perform. Um, the biggest, you know, you know when the, the first time you do that, right, you're not really, you don't realize you're doing it. Mm-hmm. But then when you experiences bring, it, it sharpens your wisdom when you when you go through shit, when you experience things or whatnot. So the first time I did that and then I dealt with a woman who genuinely liked me, like yeah. the difference is like night and day. It's like, what the fuck was I doing? That's what makes, that's why you be mad at yourself for past situations because you're comparing it to, you know what I'm saying, where you at now and what you accept now and don't accept and how you being treated and you compare the two, like, bro, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Like Shorty was just talking about, we was talking about on the behind the scenes on Patreon that y'all gotta uh, go to Patreon to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like that's what you just talking about. And Shorty, um, last year Valentine's Day, the Denver shit. I be mm. looking back on that, like, what the fuck was I doing? Man, bro. Like, what was I doing? And, it, and but you know what? You'll be mad at yourself, but you also got to remember, you know, what I'm saying your intentions. Like mm -hmm. we were doing shit in a pure place. I'm saying you was, yeah. you know, what I'm saying a genuine. And but you know you're just doing it for the wrong person. That's all. Absolutely, 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 man. Um, 
but yeah, trying to convince somebody to 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 like you or to go with you or any of that. I think we spend too much time doing that shit when you when we young because we don't know no better. I'm gonna make sure I teach my son that shit early. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it, I think we just social creatures, and it's like if everybody looking at the same girl, it's four girls in class that all the boys like. It's four niggas in class that all the girls like. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we kind of volley for that for that position, and it it don't make sense in the beginning, but we just keep doing that shit until we grow out of it. Let's talk about how um. Let's talk about how we can maybe tell guys how to decide what to do in that friend zone situation because I I'm not I don't want to make it seem like you should just accept the friend zone and be there and be this genuine friend and you know what I'm saying you you I don't want to invalidate you know what I'm saying the, these romantic feelings that you had so I would say <laughs> I would say if you pursued this woman in a romantic fashion and that's what you genuinely wanted like you that's what you wanted and she's not on that and obviously this is a situation where she this was this is a new person a new woman mm-hmm. out you can choose to walk away like you got to think about it you still she chose to not want to mess with you in that way because that's what she wanted you wanted a romantic situation so you can respect what you wanted too, and oh, okay, cool. You can respectfully bow out and go not find your fake. situation. Go find it. Go exactly. Go mm-hmm. find your situation. Mm-hmm. You don't have to stick around. And the worst thing you could do is stick around and be uh, disingenuous. Is that, I'm saying that right? Disingenuous. Yeah, disingenuous. That's the worst thing you could do. If you cool, like like Terry, like yeah, that's cool. If you can dec- decipher the two, the situation and the and the person, and shorty friends on you or whatever. And you don't mind, you know what I'm saying, still being around and you disassociated and you don't have any bitterness, cool, do that. But uh I don't think a lot of guys can do that. So I think you might want to just uh I I agree. So as much as I'm saying that a lot of the friend zone comes from men being bitter, mm-hmm. I also feel and women can be bitter too. We just talking to men right now, but this happens the other way. I have had women come support Rose's idea, Terry Rose on podcast, do things like that in the attempt to get at me. Mm-hmm. And when I when that shit not on the table, it'd be a a problem. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like, shorty, I would have told you could have came and just shot your shot directly and I would have told you I wasn't on shit. You ain't have to do all the shit you just did. So women do the same shit. Is that, that why about. ticket sales be low for some shit? Cause you you out here uh selling dreams. I ain't, I ain't selling no fucking dream. Right. Like, yeah, I'm fucking with you. Selling tickets. <laughs> 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 selling stupid tickets. Look. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry. What was I? What was I? What was I saying? Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, it, even though I'm saying that that shit comes from bitterness, which I do believe, you should still walk away if that's truly how you feel. If you yeah. truly feel bitter about it, mm-hmm. you should walk away. You shouldn't be bitter and still stay in that situation and act like it ain't that and you know because you should have boundaries at the end of the day if you don't feel comfortable in the situation put that boundary up and i say come clean even if it's a situation like the situation you just described he shot his shot she went on shit that's a little easier Mm -hmm. if it's the other situation the way y'all been cool this whole time and you haven't been honest about how you feel and now you have you are honest about how you feel and she reject you and she, but she expect you to still be that friend, or y'all in a situation where like y'all kind of together. Yeah. Whether whether y'all mm. work together or y'all classmates, so y'all still around each other, y'all still in the same group. You a cop, she's your partner. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit like, that. Like, like I think in that situation you should come clean mm-hmm. and just be like, you know what? Uh, well, you already came clean and told her that you wanted her and you got shot down. But I think you should also come clean and say like. Now that you shot me down, I do feel uneasy around mm-hmm. you. I do feel uneasy in this situation. I'm not trying to be a petty nigga, but that's how I truly feel. So I need a little time and space away from yes, the situation. Perfect. Be cool. Like, actually come clean about it. That way, the shit ain't super awkward and weird. It's, shit only be awkward when somebody not saying something. Yeah. That's why it's called a, a awkward silence ain't always really silent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not always literally silent. Yeah. Like, it's just an elephant in the room that we ain't talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that elephant gonna be in a room if y'all been friends, you expressed your love, she shot you down, and now you just go back to, oh hey, good morning. Like, no, shit is weird now. Let's, so let's weird. put it all out there. Yeah. Nigga, if you need your space, take your space. That was such good advice. Um coming, just coming clean in 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 that fashion and putting your pride aside, like, yo, I ain't look, I ain't even gonna hold you. 
Like, uh, I had these yeah. reservations for you. Obviously, you ain't on that page. That's cool. But I do feel a way. I did have some genuine feelings for you. So give me some time. You know what I'm saying? It, things may be awkward for me because I'm I'm feeling uneasy. And I don't want to, you know what I'm saying, make it seem like it's you or make the whole situation, you know, weird. I'm just got to get past these, you know what I'm saying, emotions that I was feeling. And then, you know what I'm saying, we could be right back to it. Or, you know, I respect your boundaries. Like, nigga, you say that. She fuck around and start liking. Fuck around, I'm like, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like damn, yeah, women won't because they can't get to it. And I'm not saying that. Say that so yeah, she can like you. Yeah, don't do that. Like, I'm just saying it's a I'm, possibility. I'm not gonna edit that part out. <laughs> nigga gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> hey, nigga, been a, nigga gonna weaponize the shit out that clip. <laughs> oh man, this shit crazy. Um, we already touched on this, but uh, basically, I wanted to ask, <laughs> do do most men, for most men, does the friend zone come, are they act, when they're running from the friend zone, are they acting out of boundaries or bitterness? And I think that it's, we already discussed that it's mostly bitterness. Um, oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. It's mostly bitterness, but I do think some could be acting out of boundaries. So we already touched that. Let's talk about the actual benefits of actually being friends. Like for me, I feel like for one, I don't shoot my shot at women who don't got shit going on. I think that's a big part of it as well is that a lot of guys can't see the value in a woman they're trying to shoot their shot at beyond romance or sex. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm not shooting my shot at women who don't got shit going on. So if the romance is off the table, the sex is off the table, we still can be cool because you're, you're beneficial to be around. Yeah. Right. Like the shorty I told the story about at the beginning, she put us in play and made some shit that we had going on work. You know what I'm saying? But I knew from the jump that she had dope shit going on. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to fuck with her anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you dating women who got shit going on, you can probably see the value in being a friends. But if you dating a chick who don't got shit going on, then it's easier to feel like, why the fuck would I be your friend? Right. That's when it's, uh, it's one way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like friendships, it's, it's a mutual benefit mm -hmm. to, for, for, uh, for one another. But when you just hollered at, you know what I'm saying, the pretty face, and now you're sticking around as the friend and you, you know, helping her with groceries. You're fucking doing um, small tasks for, you know what I'm saying? You're putting gas in the car. You, you're you helping her out with these little tasks that normally men would do. Yeah. But you're not getting, what are you getting on that end? What is conversation, maybe? I hate the uh, word simp, but that's, yeah. That, that, that's what it comes down to. Like when you, and it, it's like when you, like, I just talked about in Patreon. The shit kind of happened to me. Like once, like somebody kind of revealed that that's how they felt. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like I ain't going out of my way for nobody. I ain't doing no. I ain't bringing no motherfucking groceries in no shit like that. Right. <laughs> but you know, I ain't going out of my way for nobody. But the shit that I was doing, instead of it being appreciated, it was kind of like expected or looked at like some type of like. It was just like, oh no, nah, we ain't doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's literally like I don't like the word simp. But when you doing shit and you going out of your way for somebody, and and you you desire some level of reciprocity and you're not getting it and you still willing to go out your way, that's when it's nasty. That's simpish. Yeah, that, that's when it get to that level. But um what's some of the other benefits you feel like of a platonic relationship? Um being able to now this is, you know, obviously you you y'all actual friends and shit. Mm -hmm. Like a platonic if you have a platonic relationship with a woman, um, I feel like you can talk to her, you know, let's say if you have a you got a woman now, right? Mm -hmm. You can express yourself to your platonic friend in ways that you can't express yourself to your woman because your platonic friend has no emotional attachment to you. Mm -hmm. She's not looking at you to provide and protect for her. So the conversations can go a little further and you can, you know, get things off your chest uh, more than, you know, outside of your therapist, of course, you know, we advocates for therapy and shit. But like you can just have those type of conversations with your platonic friend and get some... Um, get some decent, I don't even want to say advice, but just hearing a, a woman's perspective on uh, maybe, you know, whatever it is you got going on and you know, your whole situation, whatever that situation may be. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one benefit of platonic friendships is there's no, um, you don't have to, I don't want to say not boundaries. You ain't got to be like tiptoeing around how you, ain't you walking on eggshells. You ain't got to be walking on eggshells. You can just flat out just, you know, and still get that woman's perspective. There's no judgment. Judgment free. No zone. judgment. It might actually be a safe space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That safe Outside space we'd be looking for with your girl, that might actually be in a platonic friend. A lot of y'all are missing out on that safe space because I can't be friends with a woman. Her ass, that ass is too fat. Yeah. 
She has a vagina. Oh my God. Can't be friends. <laughs> Thirst my girls. Um, <laughs> I feel like I get a compliment that I appreciate and it's a high compliment of being emotionally intelligent. People charge me with yeah, that. Yeah, same. And um, a lot of that comes from being platonic friends with women. Not necessarily women building me up that way, but being able to see a woman as a full person will make you more emotionally intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, we don't, as much as it sounds like some feminist shit to say that a, a, a man don't see a woman as a whole person, it's really true, right? And I hate to get this example. It's going to sound crazy. People are going to attack me for it. I don't give a fuck. It's the only example I can think of. <laughs> I'm not comparing women to dogs. To who? Dogs. I'm okay. Not. Sound like you're but, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but you have people that are dog people and people who are not. Mm -hmm. People that's not dog people don't fucking like dogs. I don't like dogs. If I was driving down the street and saw a dead dog in the street, I would like get the fucking dog out the street and drive around <laughs> the dog. Like, like somebody come get this fucking dog like out the street. Like, like just like it being a squirrel or like roadkill. Mm-hmm. People who love dogs have a deep empathy and understanding for dogs, right? There is a lot of men who don't see women as full of people. Mm -hmm. But when you have a female friend and you're not looking at her for sex or romance and you can see her as a full person, you have a different affection and love for women. I, I agree. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Like you're not, it, it's completely different. Like, you don't want to learn from her. Exactly. And when you see somebody as a full person, you can see their mistakes clearly. You can have more grace for their mistakes. You can, um, you're not as offended by their past. So you're not, as, have a knee jerk reaction to them having some type of experience before you or whatever the case may be, because you see them other outside of what they can do for you and what they can provide for you and what they mean to you. And you see them as who they are for themselves and what they, what they like me isolated from you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, the emotional intelligence that you're that a lot of men lack, I feel like a lot of it come from not having female friends around it. Because other than that, every woman around you, you kind of look at what they can or can't do. For your mom, you kind of look at that at that way. I, for me, I learned a lot of my like emotional intelligence. I got a lot of women in my life, like my sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, my my mama, my uh, my two sisters, like just great. yeah, three different women, three different personalities. And women emotion, all of that shit mixed in one in one house <laughs> growing up. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing a lot of different situations. I'm seeing how women react to certain things. I'm seeing how the little things matter. I'm seeing that, you know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of different scenarios or, or whatnot. And I have genuine love for them. It's not like a, and they're women though. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like that made me really mo emotionally intelligent, you know, in the door on top of developing friendships over the years with uh with with uh women who are just like just my friends and no relation yeah yeah i'm gonna say this too about the dog reference because <laughs> <laughs> this is what i really wanted to say pete on his ass this is what i really wanted to say and it was gonna sound a lot better and i forgot to say it when a dog person looks at a dog they don't just see a dog they see a family member yeah uh, mm -hmm. they love dogs like they love people you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. and i think that like when a man who looks at a woman who has female friends, they don't just look at the woman. They don't just see a fat ass and somebody they can have sex with or have a relationship with. They see like a whole person. That's that's the, really the reference I was trying to make. But, I low key, it, it sounds like you're saying that, you know, since some guys look at women, how, you know, certain white people look at black people. You know, they, they got white people who look at dogs like more of a, you know. What you just said <laughs> is literally like, the standpoint of so many women who research male privilege as opposed to white, like white privilege. Mm -hmm. And it's really the same thing. Mm. Um, and a lot of people say like men are the white people of the black community. That's fucked up. Right. I didn't know male privilege was a thing until I went to college. Like I didn't think I never even heard of the term. And when I heard of it, I instantly rejected it because it's just like, my life ain't easy. What the fuck you mean privilege? privilege. Like I just That's came like from when, uh, Roseland. <laughs> it was hard to get here. What the fuck is you talking Charlemagne, about? Charlemagne, okay, his book Black Privilege. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's triggering. But then when you hear, when you really 
open yourself up to think about all the shit that women have to deal with because they're women that you would never have to think about. Yep. It's ridiculous, right? We got our different sets of issues. It's shit that, you know, we go through as well. It's shit that white people go through as well. But they have, we have, as black people, we deal with a lot of shit that a white person would never have to think twice about. Period. Mm -hmm. Just because of color they skin. And because we're men, it's a lot of shit that we don't have to worry about as well. And, um, I think the way to combat that is for one, understand that you have male privilege, but for two, use that privilege to benefit somebody of, uh, to benefit a woman. Um, I was at the riots in Chicago during COVID and the George Floyd shit. And I saw white privilege for the first time benefit black people. And that's, that's, this is the quintessential non-racist person. <laughs> if there was a non-racist badge, I would have been handing them bitches out <laughs> at the motherfucking what's the name? Because the, the police was like, just running up on black people, doing a looting, doing a riots, doing whatever. And it was white women who literally would surround the black person and hold hands and like lay on the nigga. Cause they know these police officers is not going to touch us. And mm -hmm. that shit was crazy to see. Like, cause if I, if I, me and my homies got around, dude, y'all oh, would just man, fuck all us up. up. <laughs> yeah. For the same shit that they just did, y'all would have fucked us up for us trying to stop you from arresting this person. But then white girls was literally running to black people and surrounding them and just getting in a circle and just tightening up. And the yeah. police was just like, all right, fuck it. That, that's literally using right privilege to benefit somebody who don't have the privilege. So it's no different than, and this is a way small example, but if we're in a meeting and it's a male dominated meeting or a male dominated space and it's a woman speaking and a man cuts her off. It's like, hold on, bro. Let her finish. What, what are you saying? It could be something that simple, G, because yeah. they don't get heard in a lot of spaces. And that's literally like using your privilege to help somebody who, who don't have it. You know what I'm saying? So I fuck with that. That's a sidebar. What's some other uh another benefit? And I talked about this before of having female friends. Nigga, they you gonna have access to more women. Like at the end of the day, and that's not. I'm not saying use platonic Nigga, friendship. It's a, ben, it's a to benefit get that comes with women. it. One of the benefits is you're gonna have more women around you. You're gonna be able to. To, to maneuver more and throw more events. You know, we always talk about when we throw events, it's a lot of women that come to the events. A part of that is because there, we have a lot of chicks around us that we're not trying to fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you're trying to fuck every cute chick around you, you can't put them all in one room no more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're really that player and you're not. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, be cool with some of the chicks. Be in the friend zone. Be cool. Like, be cool. They're going to bring other chicks around. You're going to be able to have dope-ass events, dope-ass birthday party, meet a whole Give bunch of Give yourself an women. opportunity to meet the rest of the friends. Yeah. Like, you know how many times, like, you, like if you when you prematurely holler at a chick and then she brings three more <laughs> girls around and you like one of them way more, you more attracted, oh, you, got you the being thirsty one the just smoked. You know what I'm saying? Because you shot at the first one you seen. You got the weakest one in the group. That's fucked. Wait, that's, that's bogus. She's yeah, not weak. Like he, just, he just liked maybe the other girl more. You got the, the least desirable one in the group. <laughs> I'd rather be weak. I don't know. <laughs> the least desirable. Least desirable. Crazy, crazy. By you, because it's another nigga that might like her the most. Yeah. You we all got our types. preferences. We do. We all got, got, you know, it's cool. But, and sometimes when you shoot your shot, you don't got to shoot it all the way. It's a lot of women who I meet and then just invite them to an event. And when you get there with your friends, I'm going to figure out who I like. <laughs> That was not oh, oh, you dirty. I do it all the time. <laughs> you dirty. I do it all the time. Yeah. I ain't trying and to. You can, that's, that's, you can easy, that's an easy say. Like, I never shot it. I just told you to come come out to the event. You know what I'm saying? I throw events. I keep telling y'all, I talk to women, like, pause. I talk to women like I talk to men. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, what's good? Where you from? Oh, yeah, I got an event Thursday. You should pull up. That's it. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not like, damn, shorty, you thick as hell. Like, I wish <laughs> I could take you home. Like, I'm not talking to no chick like that at all. Like, yeah. Period. Like, I'm literally talking to you the same way I would talk to a 50 year old white man who I just met at Walmart. We have the same conversation. It's like, we, neither one of us is blind or gay. Like, you know yeah. I'm attractive. I know you're attractive. We know what could happen. We don't even got to talk about it. Like, what's it's your name? Crazy Where are you sometimes, from? Sometimes uh, women be over romanticizing shit like that. Like, oh man, he likes me so much. And 100%. yeah. Niggas do that shit too. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, that's about it, man. Okay. You got AMP? Yeah. Um, let me see. I was having a conversation and let me see. We, I think we were talking about, 
should have thought about that beforehand. But basically, how women kind of dictate the behavior of men. Right. And when you think about what women give attention to, especially as young boys coming up, what women give attention to, boys typically try to emulate that or mirror whatever they like to get the girl. So if the girls or the women are romanticizing a hood nigga or a nigga who scam or a nigga who, you know, sell drugs or whatever the case may be. And he and, and guys are seeing neutral guys are seeing this. They are, they're going to pick a path. And since I want, since the type of women that I like, like this, I'm going to lean more towards this way. Mm-hmm. So if women, like, I'm just saying like women can really change the narrative. Uh, and, and it, at this age, I'm I'm low key speaking to people who are like a lot younger than us. You know what I'm saying? Because at, at this age, we ain't gonna get into that. But like uh, younger women can really dictate the direction of men if y'all all just start really liking the niggas who smart, really liking the niggas who you know what I'm saying read books, really like whatever y'all choose. The nigga gonna lean towards that shit because you know what I'm saying y'all hold the keys low key, and uh, you and even though we are at this same age. Ladies, if y'all attracting a certain type of guy, you probably giving attention to characteristics of, you know, a, a certain guy. So if, if all of these niggas is hollering that you got this one thing in common and you low key don't want all of that nigga, but there's certain things you got to pay attention to what you like. You know what I'm saying? If you start paying attention to or if you start giving attention to uh, the qualities that you want in a nigga, you low key start attracting those uh, same qualities. But. Women, y'all got y'all hold the keys to this shit, and y'all could dictate the direction of uh of, of men. Mm. Okay, I can't say I disagree with that. I can't say I disagree with that. I do feel like men are the leaders and the initiators and things like that, but that's a fact. <laughs> like, yeah. What you just said is true. There's no refuting that. Like niggas is definitely gonna flow the way that the women, uh, whatever way the women lean, and um, in our neighborhoods, unfortunately, a lot of you know a lot of chicks lean towards. Wallow says some cold shit. He say this a lot too. I be watching his interviews. Um, he like in like in in the culture in the hood, like the the nigga who you know what I'm saying pull up the, the dope boy pull up in the the, the bench. You know what I'm saying got the chain or whatever case may be. He getting all the respect. He getting all the praise. He he coming to pick up the baddest chick in the neighborhood. He pull up all the older ladies. Hey, how you doing? Boo? Hey, what's up, Miss Green? Hey, woo. And nigga, old Joe, who just get off work, nigga, he's invincible. <laughs> he walk right past, don't nobody say what's up to him. The baddest woman ain't checking for him. So if young kids, young impressionable kids, or young, not even kids, just young men uh, who are neutral are seeing this, why the fuck would I want to be Joe? <laughs> yeah. You know the fucked up part is? We're not even assessing it for real. Mm-hmm. It's just, and like, we see it, and it's almost like we learn it through osmosis. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because as, as, as an eight-year-old, you didn't just assess the fact that everybody spoke to him and nobody spoke to him. It's just something you're like, I want to be like that nigga. Like, you don't even know why. Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you just like, damn. Like, it's the validation. You see how much validation he getting, how much attention he getting. And you just want that attention. You know what I'm saying? So It's natural. So, yeah. ladies, y'all could dictate all that shit, man. If y'all start just, you know, switching the attention. For sure, for sure. Um, Advice to single moms. Advice to my single moms out there. The best way to teach your son emotional regulation, in my opinion, is through a combat sport. And the reason why I advocate for boxing and combat sports for young kids is not so they can learn how to fight. It's not so they can, you know, protect themselves. That's secondary. That's a great thing. That's secondary. But it's more so because when you're in a combat sport, you learn how to regulate your emotions by being in high intense situations and having to be calm to get through those situations. Mm -hmm. So I always ask people, if you were to, um, if you were to, to, to catch on fire, if your body was to catch on fire, what should you do? Everybody's going to say, stop, drop and roll. And I always ask people, have you ever seen somebody on fire actually stop, drop and roll? You've never seen this shit. People run around in a circle. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? People run around in a circle until they fall the fuck out. And the reason why is because they never been on fire before. They've never been in the situation, even though it's ingrained in their brain exactly what to do in that situation. They've never been in that situation before and they don't react properly. So that goes to show you that no matter how many times you tell your son, just walk away. Just don't crash out. Don't do this. Don't do that in that situation. It don't matter. When he gets in that situation, he's triggered and he's hot. He's going to do what his instincts tell him to do. The best Mm -hmm. way that I know to combat that is in combat sports, when when it's time to... 
when it's time for me to get in the ring, it, I could get in the ring with somebody who I've beat up a hundred times, and I know that they're not even it's not even a competitive thing. I still get that that anxiety in my chest. It's just a feeling I have. But because I've had that feeling so many times, I know how to control that. I know how if I use this four seven eight breathing method, I'm gonna get over this anxiety. If some if I get in there and I get hit in the mouth and I get you know what I'm saying? I get, I get, I know that I can't get frustrated because my frustration is not going to allow me to think clearly, to maneuver through this situation and through this boxing match and be smart and and focus on my counter punching and my, my whatever I got to focus on. So, boxing is a way for me, was a way for me as a young kid to learn that just become a, just because I'm upset don't mean I can react the way I naturally want to react. I got to think my way through this, right? I'm mad as fuck. I got to go to that corner. I got 30 seconds to calm down. Before I have to start thinking again, that's great practice to regulate your emotions. So, to all my single moms out there, if you can get your kid involved in a combat sport specifically, I know basketball, football, all that other stuff, that's cool. But combat sports is gonna teach your kid how to regulate not only just the self defense, but really how to regulate their emotions and calm down fast and stay calm. It's nothing more intense than pure violence, right? Mm. Football can be violent. But somebody punch you in your face is somebody punch you in your face. And there's nothing that can make a person more tense than being punched in the face. If you can calm down <laughs> after that, you can calm down after a whole lot of shit and think your way through a lot of situations. Most niggas is locked up right now. It's locked up because they couldn't control their reaction. So don't let that be your kid. Get them involved in the combat sport, man. But other than that, that's all I got. You got anything else? Well, that's it. Anybody chasing anything in life right now, man, you know what to do, man. Keep your foot on the gas. Keep belt to ass. Yeah. Get, <laughs> get the most out of life, man. Don't take what life give you, as my boy Maciano always say. Keep pushing uphill, man. Shoot a shoot. We out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all God in the cave.